But I would say the one really biggest misconception, in my opinion, um, specifically in the area of leadership, is the assumption that uh, leadership is simply um, a, an incremental uh, growth and development and unfolding over life. And like going through one's 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, it's all kind of similar in nature. We just become better leaders with more experience and things like that. So what I discovered um, and Around a year ago, I made a conscious decision to stop coaching people under 40, uh, whether it's individuals under 40 or teams, top teams under 40. So now I really focus only um, on C-suite teams made up of individuals all over 40, which is true for most C-suite teams. However, that decision came about because I was noticing more and more a qualitative difference between when we're in our 30s versus when we're at 40s and 50s. Um, and, and, and by focusing on that area, I was able to really develop a lot more distinctions between those two ages. And that's what the book is about. Um, I, I discovered in the process of writing it that some of the biggest leadership gurus that I have tremendous respect for and use their work like Jim Collins from Good to Great, Michael Keegan. Um, what I discovered is that the vast majority of these writers developed their frameworks and models when they were still in their 30s. So we have a whole industry on leadership that's not making much of a distinction with midlife and kind of treating it all as kind of a continuum. Um, is that So I think the biggest misconception is, is that, and that if we can look at midlife specifically, um, there are things that are happening that reduce our effectiveness and there are things that are happening that increase our effectiveness uh, in many ways. So looking at making that distinction, I think is very powerful. Mm -hmm. And is so you mentioned that there are things in our life that reduce our effectiveness. Um, so what are the, these challenges that that we have? Is it that we think a little bit slower when we are in the fifty? Yeah. What what type of yeah. things happen? <laughs> we forget where we put our car keys. We forget our our child's name. <laughs> or we're in front of the board. We say, "I know your name." <laughs> Don't tell me, I'll remember it. <laughs> That's a cliche, in fact, well, right? <laughs> or we're in, or we're presenting to the board, and we have uh, on the screen a spreadsheet that's there showing uh, all kinds of stuff, and then we forget what in the world was the formula behind this one cell. I don't remember it, and I used to know every single cell on the spreadsheet. That, that's the that's the prefrontal cortex that's slowing down. Mm. And that uh, it peaks in our 30s and it begins slowing down early 40s. So the prefrontal cortex, that's where we feel like we're not thinking as fast. It's not as clear. And at the same time, we have the two hemispheres are talking more together, the right and left hemispheres which means that we can connect the dots more easily. And, and, and this doesn't, this begins, this peaks around our, in our 50s. So that continues to grow for a while, for quite a while, um, which means that we can see patterns where we maybe didn't see patterns when we were a little younger. We can connect the dots more. Um, so they, the, these are some of the cognitive changes. And the risk is if we hold on to who we were when we were younger, then we become brittle because then we get angry. I don't remember what's in that spreadsheet, but I'm going to pretend like I do. I don't remember the details of that contract, but I'm going to pretend like I do because otherwise nobody will trust me or value me anymore if I start forgetting things. So we so we can we can become hardened like that if we try to hold on to the past. If we can move into these areas and embrace the new things that are emerging, then we can look around and we can say, okay, I need, I need some of that fresh, younger 
people around me that have prefrontal cortexes that are still at their peak. And I will focus more on the big picture, connecting the dots, finding the patterns, empowering my people to really find solutions. So it, it makes it easier to move into that higher level of leadership by recognizing that I'm doing it because that's how I'm growing as well. 